Hello everyone and welcome to this week's extension tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to read data from a server and then use that inside of your extension. In this case, we're going to be reading data from the International Space Station and its longitude and latitude live from a web server and then update that to this extension with a map and some information displayed. The main gist of what you're going to be learning today is how to get this number here, which is changing every single second and it's reading it every single second from the web server. If you want to go the extra mile, you can include a world map and then some information about how the margins of your image in my case the international space station is the extend script logo and it's going to go ahead and move where the space station actually is right now it's kind of a bad example because it's really far up north so you can't see it translating up and down but sometimes you can watch it go uh, up and down as well as east and west before we get started just want to remind you down below to hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel and down in the description you can download the bare bones uh, extension testing uh, code to go ahead and follow along with this tutorial and down there as well you can follow us on Instagram. If you want to communicate with the community more about scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and contribute tutorial ideas you can join our discord server as well. So I've gone ahead and stripped out my JavaScript and I'm also going to strip out most of my HTML code here so that I just have my longitude and latitude displays. So now you see I just have my longitude and latitude. I also have an area for each of the texts as well. So if you go to where the ISS dot this is where we're going to get the API information it shows us where the ISS is currently and we can hit the API button to start seeing some information. All we need to do is find the resource URL which we have right here API slash where the ISS and if we paste this into our address bar you can see it's going to give us some JSON information. We have the name which is the ISS and the ID which is 25544. Now what we can do is go a little bit deeper by inside of the URL, we'll add a slash and we're going to type in the ID of the ISS, so 25544. And now you can see this is gonna give us even more information uh, such as the latitude, the longitude, the altitude, the velocity it's traveling and a whole bunch of other information. And if we hit refresh, you can see these values are going to be updated ever so slightly as it's moving. So what we're going to be doing is connecting to this uh, address here and then every second refreshing the information inside of our extension. So the first thing I'll do is define a variable called URL and we'll set that equal to the one that we just created where we have our ID of the ISS and the API website. And I should note of course this isn't going to work for APIs that require high levels of security and such. This is more use for like open APIs or connecting to your own local or your own server. Then what we're going to do is create a variable or a constant, whatever you want. Typically with web connections, you want to use constants just based on convention, it seems. So we're going to create a constant called response. And what we're going to do is say await. We're going to await for a response from the server. This means that whatever we're waiting for needs to be asynchronous or not in the same basic time as our JavaScript here. So we're going to be waiting to fetch something from the website. And we're going to be fetching something from the URL. And that basically means we're going to go to our URL here and fetch whatever the information is. And once we are done awaiting for that information from the server to be sent to us, it's going to store it in response. So if I go ahead and say alert response, let's see if we can see it. Nothing. And this is because we need to basically use the await keyword with an asynchronous function we define. So I'm going to define a function, but before that I'm going to say async, and then we'll just call this get ISS. And then I'll copy and paste my response and I might as well use my URL information in there as well. Or we could even pass it as a variable. So let's say get ISS URL and I'll pass that into here. And now let's go ahead and try it. Now you can see we're getting a response. So we have to make sure our function that is going to be awaiting for an answer is asynchronous and we're just going to get that first response but nothing else. The way we get around that is by using a set interval. Uh, what we do is just say set interval and we're going to be setting the interval around our get ISS here. The first argument of a set interval is the basically function you're going to run and in our case that's actually this get ISS thing here. And then the second argument is going to be the time to wait. 
In this particular website, you can only send a response every one second, but let's go ahead and show like two or three seconds just for illustrative purposes. So if I run it now, after three seconds, we get a response. Now we wait, one, two, three, and every three seconds now, we're gonna get a response from the server. Now we need to take that response and convert it to JSON format. So I'll make another constant called, say, data, and set this equal to await. We're going to wait again, and what we're going to await for is to grab our response.json. And this is just another way of converting our response into JSON data. So now if I go ahead and alert our data, in three seconds, we're going to get an alert saying we have an object. Now the object is going to be a JSON object, and this is the entire object here. So what we can do is grab, say, the latitude or the longitude and get those values. So let's change this response to one second, and then alert data.longitude. So now every one second we should get that value. You can see negative 108.68, and now the next time it's going to be a different value and it's going to keep refreshing over and over. As you can see, this is already pretty exciting and powerful. Now we can easily plug this in to values within our UI. So sometimes it's a good idea to remove your alert. If it's going to alert every second, it can get a little bit annoying. So now what we're going to do is take the data and push it into these variables here. So what we're going to do inside of our HTML here is grab our longitude value text and latitude value text, and inside of our uh, async function, after we get our data, after we've waited for our response, we're going to grab document.getElementById called longitude value text and set the inner HTML equal to our data dot longitude. And then all I have to do is copy and paste this and do the same thing for latitude. Now if we go ahead and load it up, and now you can see we're going to get updated longitude and latitudes every second from the server uh, inside populating our HTML information. So really that's the main meat of this tutorial and that's mainly hopefully what you came here for. You're just getting the data updated every so often from the server, how to await for the response of the server using an asynchronous JavaScript function and then converting it to JSON and then doing whatever you want with the data because there's so much of it being updated and you can graph it. If you wanna go the extra mile, what you can then do is get like a world map and then stick it inside of your assets. So I have here a world map uh, which I'm going to stretch out onto the canvas. And this is my International Space Station object, which is going to represent the longitude and latitude. And all I did was added these inside of the HTML. And then I have these margin displays because we're gonna be using margins to move the ISS from left to right or up or down. And basically we're gonna want this information displayed live on screen so we can see how the input information is coming in, if it's being changed and messing things up, and then we can go in and tweak it and make sure it works properly. And then basically what I did with this world map, it, it was 720 by 477, and a, a whole sphere is 360 degrees around, so I had to interpolate that information. And basically, if the longitude is greater than zero, I had to move it positionally from the left side uh, with the longitude times two, because the max longitude is gonna be 360, but our image is 720. Luckily, 360 times two happens to be 720. So I just had to multiply it by two to get the length of that, if it's the maximum value, of course, and then add another 360 because there was some spacing that I had to account for. And then the same for the opposite. If the longitude is negative, you can use a margin left or right. And then latitude to adjust the margin top and bottom. I'm still sort of perfecting this algorithm and maybe you can do even better. But then after that, I'm just changing the margins and then updating the text here so that I can see, oh, as the longitude and latitude of the ISS are changing, this is how my margins are changing. And I can even look at where it's moving on here live and adjust the information. But that's gonna do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to read data from a web server inside of your extension. If you enjoyed, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can download the extension testing uh, base code to get started and follow along this tutorial if you wanna watch it again. Down in the description as well, you can follow us on Instagram to be notified of cool updates.
And of course, don't forget to follow us on the Discord server to get help with scripting, plugins, extensions, expressions, and contribute tutorial ideas, ask your questions, and many other things. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.